This conference will now be recorded. Okay, so is my screen visible to you all? Yes. Okay, fine. Yes. So since you all people are from that IT background, so I don't want to give that more the scratch level of that uh, uh, purpose of this ETL purpose. So the ETL, so actually the ADF is nothing but it is an ETL tool only. ADF is an ETL tool only. So you know that one ETL purpose that extract transformation loading purpose. But here actually what we can do it now. So the ETL and ELP, the two way actually we can do that one. So the ETL is nothing but extract transform load. And ELT actually is what extract load transform. So we can load the data into that our destination environment and then we can do the transformation. So the normal uh, ETL usually what you will do it now, you will extract the data from that one of the data sources environment and then you will do the transformations. Then you will load the data into that your data warehousing environment. So the, the same way here we can uh, do this one, uh, do this ETL as well as that ELT because here if you are having that were all the data in that you are on a file format the file format mostly here we are using that our csv file format and uh, json file format uh, parquet file format or type of file formats so mostly actually so the data is actually in this environment uh, cloud environment we are going to use it uh, uh, in the file format the data also we are going to use it that file format data information what we are going to do so we are going to copy from that one environment to that another environment just loading the data just loading the data so the data actually it will be loaded directly into the directly it will be it will be that into that your destination environment so then then you can do that your transformation so, so that is called that elt extract load and transformation so these two functionalities actually we can do it in this adf environment so here uh, you know that our on premises environment data if you are having now that on premises environment data here it might be that any of the storages. It might be that any of the storages. You can have that your data, that database of storages. It might be that SQL Server or that your Oracle or that your file format storages. File format. It might be that Excel file, the CSV file or JSON type of file, any type of files, it, it might be that your source data information. So using that your ETL tool, so you are going to do the all the transformation. So you are going to do the uh, transformation now. So here the ATL will function, then for destination. So here. So it is going to be a destination environment. For the destination environment, so you may use that one of the, you may use that one of the data, sto data storages as a warehouse environment actually. So uh, it might be that your SQL background, uh, SQL server background, uh, Microsoft background uh, 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 data warehouse or that Oracle background data warehouse, you can use it. So here, the data transformation, so from this environment to, from to this environment, it will be stored. This is called a data warehouse. This is called the data warehouse. This is a normal one. So here you are using that your ATL technology. The ATL technology usually what you are using, uh, you are using that Informatica, you are using that SSIS, you are using that your data stage. This type of uh, data transformation tools actually you are using. But now here, so all actually all of your business data nowadays their companies are they are moving into that our uh, cloud environment. So they are moving their data into the cloud environment. So current days, your data actually you are keeping in that your on-premises environment. The on-premises data, if you want to move it into that your cloud environment now, so it will not allow. It will not allow. It will not allow the data directly using this data, using these ATL features actually it will not allow. See, you want to move the data. From here to here, you want to move the data. This is the environment. So uh, on premises you are having. So you have to do the ETL, but the destination is going to be different. The destination actually, so it is not going to be that our same the on premises environment. It is going to be the, the cloud environment. 
But if you want to move the data into the cloud environment by doing that transformations, now then using that your ETL tool, that Informatica or that your SSIS or data size is not possible. It will not allow to interact with it or uh, cloud environment. So that is the purpose only. So actually, we are bringing that our ADF into the picture. The ADF is the cloud-based ETL tool. It is nothing but a cloud-based ETL tool. It's a cloud-based ETL tool, ADF. ADF is nothing, it's a cloud-based ETL tool. So if you want to transfer the data from the on-premises environment to cloud or cloud to cloud also, we can do the transformation. Cloud to cloud transformation. So that is the purpose. Actually, we are going to use that Azure Data Factory. The Azure Data Factory is one of the most important tool in the Azure Data Engineering. Using this Azure Data Factory only, we can do that or maximum of the transformations, uh, the data loading processing, we can do it using ADF. As well as we are going to use the data bricks also, we are going to use it. The same data bricks we are we are also going to learn in our session also. The data bricks actually, when we are going to bring it now, so when you are dealing with that uh, big size of data, the big data, so transformations, so that time actually we have to deal with that our uh, data bricks. The data bricks is nothing but it is the, uh, it is the environment to do that, all the transformations so by writing the code actually. The ADF, it's a totally code-free technology. ADF is a totally code-free technology. So the user uh, interfaces only, you are going to use it for your transformation uh, logics, uh, different definitions, actually. So you are going to use that ADF. You are going to define that logics. So by using that graphical user interface, tools only you are going to define it. You are not going to write anything code. So this, that is the reason only we are, we are telling like this one, this is the code-free technology. The ADF is the code-free technology. But small disadvantage also that the huge amount of data transformation so when we are doing using that adf now so the performance it will be impact actually so at that time so to improve the performance as well as to handle that huge amount of data what we are going to use it now we are going to use that ever another one it's called the azure data bricks azure data bricks the data bricks actually so we are going to define the code using that Python, actually PySpark, the Python plus Spark language, we are going to use it here. Python plus Spark. It's a language we are going to use it for defining that our transformation logics. So this is the two tools actually, mostly so uh, uh, we are going to use it in that Azure data engineering for that our data transformation purpose. Actually. So simple ADF is nothing, it is a cloud ETL. Okay, is it clear? So why and where, when we are going to use the ADF? Ah, yes, it is clear. Uh, but one doubt that cloud to cloud transformation, how is it done? What is yeah, that? Yeah. Actually, I didn't get the point. Yeah, I will, I will, I will tell you detail. Yeah. But the ADF, purpose of the ADF, now it's clear, right? Why we are going to use it and where we are going to use it. Is it clear, right? What about others? Yes. Yes, it's clear. Okay, fine. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So now. Just imagine, uh, this is one of my data storage environment, so which I'm having the data in my cloud environment. That cloud environment, as of now, I'm taking that Azure as my cloud data cloud. So that's the Azure environment. Azure environment, which I'm taking. Azure environment. So I'm having the data here. I'm having my data. So here I'm having my data. So the data might be anything. So, but I'm having the data here. And I'm having that one on-premises enrollment data. I'm having that one on-premises enrollment. So this is my on-premises enrollment. Fine. Here we are having that cloud. Here we are having that on-premises. 
on premises see sometimes typo mistake will be there please leave it fine now what i want to do now i want to move my data into that my cloud environment the another cloud environment where i am keeping that my data warehouse details the data warehouse actually i'm keeping in that my data warehouse in that my cloud environment this is also going to be a azure platform this is also going to be a azure cloud it's not monetary it should be in the azure monetary uh, azure azure cloud it might be that amazon cloud or that google cloud but now i'm taking that azure cloud for the example so i'm having that azure. so here so what is that one now i want to move my data from that on premises to that cloud as well as uh, the cloud to cloud so this is one cloud actually where i'm having the data just imagine i'm having the data in that my uh, us background the us data center i'm having the data or in the us actually i'm having the data in that my us east section the east location i'm having the data this is the data i'm having in the us used yeah, east location used data this is the data actually i'm having from the india india and so any any location it might be there just for the example i am taking so this is one actually so where i'm having now yes west yes west see here i want to move the data or with all all the transformation the transformation it might be anything so all with all the transformation i want to move the data so what i want to do so here in the adf in the, in the using the adf only we can do it because that our destination is that our uh, cloud environment so into this cloud environment we have to move the data from this to this so from this to this we have to move the data and this to this we have to move the data so here we are having that our data warehouse environment. So all the data details we are going to, all the cleaned format data we are going to keep it here only. All the cleaned format data we are going to keep it here only. So this is the data warehouse environment. So how we can move the data? So sure, we have to use that ETL technology. So here only we are going to use that our ADF. The ADF, how it will do it now? By creating the pipeline, we can do it actually. By creating the pipeline. By creating the pipeline, we have to do it. See, the pipeline, so what it is going to do now, pipeline is nothing but it's a data flow, the data flow transformation. So the, actually, whatever you are going to do, the, all the transformation, the transformation, how we are going to define it now, the, in, in, in the pipeline only you are going to do it. What is the meaning of the pipeline? Pipeline is nothing but it is a collection of activity. It is a collection of activity. Here, the pipeline is nothing but, so I don't know how, what is the terms so or terminology you are using in that Informatica, uh, but in the SSIS, actually, we are using that, it's called a package, the package. So here it is called a pipeline. The Azure Data Factory, it is called pipeline. The pipeline is nothing but it's a collection of activity. What is the meaning of collection of activity? Active, what is the meaning of activity? Activity is nothing but it's action. Activity is nothing but it's, action. it's an action. So what is action? Copying data, it is an action. Deleting data, it is an action. So applying the conditions, it is an action. So doing the looping process, repeating process, loop, do, loop process, we are going to do it. The looping, it's an action. So during that your data for transformation time, so you have to do this type of actions. You may do have, to, have to check that your file types. You may have to that on, uh, apply that looping concept. You may have to that to copying data from that one environment to another environment. All are these things called activity. That means action. This action is here. It's called activity. The terminology, it's called activity. So like this one. So if you are having that multiple activity for that your transformation purpose. So that multiple activity you are keeping in that one, one, one flow. That flow actually it is going to be called pipeline. The pipeline actually we are going to create it. The pipeline actually is uh, it is going to do the, all the transformation. So what you are going to define it from the scratch to end, the, from the beginning to end, from that your on-premises enrollment or the, from that your cloud enrollment to that your destination cloud enrollment. Whatever action you are going to define it, all the actions actually we are going to define it using that our activity. All the activities it's called the pipeline. 
simple action just i'm taking that one actually what i'm going, going to do here now i am going to copy the data from this environment to this environment so copy is activity but the copy i cannot use it directly that copy where i can use it now that copy i can use it inside of the pipeline only so the pipeline should be there first the pipeline should be created inside of the pipeline what i'm going to do i'm going to use that on copy activity so this activity i'm going to i'm going to give that some inputs user inputs uh, like this one uh, where is the source is available where we have to store the destination files so all the information so i'm going to use it the information if you are going to use it now so that environment you have to mention that is called inputs actually the input if you want to give it now you have to mention that environment and environment what is the environment here actually i'm having that this is an environment this is a cloud environment this is also an environment it's a cloud environment this is an environment is on premises environment these two actually i'm going to use it as a input environment this one actually this one actually i'm going to use it as a output environment that means the destination the data warehouse actually then all are actually we are having the different paths actually different paths we are having the azure what it is doing now it is actually so it is giving some future is called linked services the azure is called linked services what is the meaning of the linked services the linked services nothing but it's a connection string linked services is nothing but it is a connection string usually in the connection string what we will keep it we will keep it keep that our server details uh, if it is a database not a database details and a table details so this information we will keep it in that our connection string so same like this one the linked services we are going to use it for the data transformation purpose the linked services what it is going to do that it is going to have that your path details where the data is available what is the server name what is the database name or what is the system name what is the folder name what is the file so these data details actually we are going to keep it as a connection string format in the link services but the link service is going to be have that your connection string only it is going to be have that one but how we can connect with your source or how you can connect with the your destination for the connecting for the connecting with your environment either it can be that a source environment or that uh, destination environment either it can be that cloud environment or the on premises environment but for the connecting with your environment the azure they are providing that one important feature is called integration runtime integration runtime what is the meaning of this integration runtime the integration runtime is just simply understanding i'm telling you nothing but this is like a bridge the integration runtime is nothing but it's like a bridge at you so bridge for what bridge between that your source to destination bridge between that your source to destination bridge between that your this us east cloud environment to that us west cloud environment this is a bridge between that your on premises india and on premises environment to that your us west cloud environment so between these two environment you have to create the connection so for the connection the connection details what is the server name what is the file name those information actually where we are going to keep it now we are going to keep it in that our link services but that link services how we are going to connect it now using that integration runtime the integration runtime it is going to be performed as a bridge between these two environment actually okay integration runtime going to be performed as a bridge that's fine but can we use that same type of integration runtime for the both environment the cloud is something different the cloud is something different but on premises is something different how i can use how i can use that integration runtime the integration runtime we are going to use it as a bridge that's fine but how i can use that integration runtime so here that integration runtime actually they are using the three types of integration runtimes they are providing that azure they are providing that three types of integration runtime one is called azure ir one is called azure ir azure ir azure integration runtime azure integration runtime another one is called self hosted integration runtime so one more azure ssis so these three types of integration runtimes the azure is they are providing for what connecting with your source and destination 
here the destination yes it is going to be that our cloud environment but the source it might be that a cloud or it might be that our on premises environment so it might be that in the on premises environment the source it might be that your ssis project the ssis actually so they are they, they are considering as a separate uh, data format because it will be in the package files format so here they are providing the three types of integration runtime features to connect with our source environment the source environment if you are having this your uh, another in the cloud environment so this environment data we have to move it into the, this environment so this is called azure cloud this is also called azure cloud but the data center located in the different places both are azure only both are going to be maintained by the microsoft only but both the environment data are not in the same places it is available in the different locations but if you want to do the data transmission between these two now so we have to connect it for the connection we are going to use the link services the link services it is going to be have only the connection string using that connection string how we are going to connect to that our environment using the integration runtime that that bridge the integration runtime so cloud environment to cloud environment now so this cloud to this cloud if you are going to use it now we are going to use this azure ir so i will show you very clearly in that our hands on session how to create the all the integrations how to use it so it will be everything so very from the free scratch level so you don't worry about that one just now i am explaining the theoretical part how we are going to use it and what we are going to use it so the cloud to cloud data transformation if you are going to do now then we have to make the connection between the two two clouds and roman so what we have to do now, at the time we have to use that integration runtime that azure integration runtime we have to use it so this is the way we can connect that our environment the cloud if it is a cloud suppose the data are available in the on premises environment the on premises environment means it's our environment actually this cloud is going to be handled by or going to be maintained by the microsoft so that data center functionalities everything is going to be controlled by the microsoft the data only ours the data center environment and your server details your database details everything going to be maintained by the microsoft but in the on premises environment it's not like that one everything is going to be maintained by ourselves our organization going to be maintained then our organization is going to take the responsibility to connect with that our cloud environment so for what, that is the, that is the purpose actually azure they are giving that feature it's called self hosted the self hosted ir the self hosted ir so they are providing this is nothing but just this is like one of the this is this is a bridge only but this is like one of the exe file you have to download it and then you have to install in that your on premises server environment where you are keeping that your data you have to install it the self hosted everything they will guide you so everything is available in that our azure portal itself so we have to download it and then we have to install it. that is our part so once you install that self hosted ir in the, in the on premises environment na, now that your on premises environment having that feature to connect with your cloud so this is the one ir for connecting with the on premises environment and azure ssis and the on premises environment if you are having that your data in the ssis in the package format now so that type of data if you want to do that to transformation into that your cloud environment now that time we have to go with that azure ssis concept so these three types of packages actually they are providing use these three types of uh, sorry uh, uh, ir they are providing using these three types of ir we can connect with our source environment so the data will be transferred the data it can be anywhere the data it can be anywhere we can get the data we can transfer the data with applying that all the transformations the destination it is going to be that our azure cloud environment so these link services and integration runtimes that major role when you are connecting with the data one more part is there it is called a data set it is called data set
but I have select and deleted. It's not a problem, okay? It's called data set. The data set, what purpose we have to use it? See, in my source environment, the source environment it might be anything. In my source environment, just imagine this is our SQL server. This is our SQL server. In the SQL server or Oracle, anything, how the data it will be, it will be that in, in, the, in, the, in the format of table. The format of table, actually, we will store the data. See here, I'm having uh, a lot of tables actually. Any tables? Is my screen visible? Yes. Okay, fine. Okay, okay. So I'm having different tables. So table one. And then table two. So it is going to be table two. This is going to be a table three. And this is going to be table four. I'm having just it, it, in the environment, it might be anything. In the environment, it might be anything. So on-premises are cloud environments. It's not a problem. So we, we discussed about those things. That's fine. But now what we are going to do, we are going to move the data. Where we are going to move it? We, we are going to move the data into that our cloud environment only because the data warehouses environment, the destination environment, we, here only we are having the data. From here only we are going to get the data for the report purpose. The report, how we are going to create it now? The report actually we are going to create it using that our Power BI. The report we are going to create it. So the destination, the data warehouse environment, it is going to be here only so here we have to move the data so i am having all the so data warehouses here data warehouse details actually everything i am having here only and so the data warehouse table okay the data warehouse this is the data warehouse table okay You want to move the data, but from this table, sorry, from this database, actually, I want to move the data only from the table four. I want to move the data only from the table four or any one of the table. Even if you want to get it now, you can get it from all the table also. But for the understanding purpose, just I'm going to take it only the one table. I want to get the data from that my table four. This is that our source and romance. The linked services, what it is going to be, it is going to be have that your connection string only it is going to be have. The integration runtime, what is the purpose of the integration runtime? The integration runtime, we are going to use it as a bridge only. Using this integration runtime, what we can do it, we can create the relationship path actually. But which data we are going to move? Which data we want to get it? Which table data you are going to get it? That identification is important, right? So to identify that your data file or data table. So identify the data file or table, what we are going to use it now, we are going to use the data set. The data set, we, can, we are going to use it for identifying that your source data. Source data, which is your data set? Which is your data? My data here that my data is table four is my data. So this data I want to move it into that my data warehouse table. So the data set actually is so we have to create two data set we have to create it. One for identifying that your data table which we are getting as a source data. Data set I'm going to create it. And another one we are going to get it, uh, we are going to create that one for finding that our destination table name. The two data set we have to use it. The two data sets we have to use it. The data set actually we are you going to use it for 
finding that your data set, the data, which data you are going to move it or you are going to transfer it with all the transformations. So to finding the data, what we are going to use it, we are going to use the data set. That means the data file or data table, it might be anything. Fine. So using these features, actually, we can do that all the transformations. So these are the features. In between the transformations, whatever you are going to, it is a separate one. So for the purpose only, we are going to use the activities. Then activities, for uh, action purpose, we are going to use it, right? That Using that activities, we can do the transformation based on that our requirement. But these all are going to be that your setups, that environment setups. These are the input for connecting with your source and destination with that feature, what you're going to do. After that only you can do that your transformations. All of these things actually after once you created now, well, then you can go with that your pipeline creation. So the pipeline is nothing but it's a collection of activity. The activity we are going to do that some actions. So this is the way only we are going to do the data movement from one environment to another environment or data transformation from one environment to another environment using the IDF. So what are the things are involving when we are working with the, our So there is some audible? Yeah, I just, when, for a moment it was disconnected. Yeah, yeah actually it's a power failure here, just I connected again from that mobile, yeah. Now it's visible and audible, clear, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, fine, yeah, we'll continue, yeah. See here, actually. So uh, in the in the, in the uh, Azure ADF actually so see here so the Azure platform so using that ADF if you want to do that your uh, transformations now what are the uh, things we have to use it see here pipeline we have to create the pipeline how we are going to create it so using the activities so for the activity usages so what we need it we have to use that uh, link services we have to use the link services and we have to use the uh, what is this one IR that means integration runtime and we have to use that uh, data sets so data set so using the data set we can find out that our data using the IR we can create the bridge so using the link services we can pause the connection string so activity for the actions and triggering feature is there trigger is nothing but actually trigger we are going to use it for running that our pipeline and scheduling that our pipeline the scheduling the pipeline or running the pipeline so so the transformation so you want to do it in that particular day in the repeatedly in a particular time and repeatedly okay? so the scheduling you can do it in the scheduling purpose actually we are going to use that our triggering concept we are going to use it so this type of actually these are called that our uh, building blocks which we are going to use it in that our azure data factory environment okay so one by one actually we will see it very detailedly so in the, all the with all with all the features what are the features are available in that each activity or each uh, building block actually we are going to see it in that 
uh, from the very scratch to advanced level. So you don't worry about that or using all these features. But now the flow. So how we are going to do that one? That flow. So is it is it clear? Yeah, Divya, you asked right now how we are going to do the data transformation from the cloud to cloud. So is it, is it clear, or now you want to uh, more explanation? No, it, it is clear, sir. But one thing I was thinking, like only we can uh, do the ETL uh, in this uh, to the environment, cloud environment, which is managed by Microsoft, right? Not only like that. So from the Amazon also, we can yeah. remove, remove the data. Okay. 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 From the from the Amazon to cloud, this cloud, so we can do it. Or from this cloud to Amazon, we can do it. Okay. So okay. So the cloud actually here it is representing it's a common word, not only the Azure cloud. Okay, got it. See, just imagine you are having that your data in the Amazon S3 pack. Okay, so in the Amazon S3 is one of the storage. So there, actually, you are having the files, data files. So that data file, the data, we have to do the sum of the transformation. So what we can do it now, from the Amazon, we can get the data. The Amazon now it is going to be used as a data source. So in in our scenario, so the same. The same file, the same environment, the same environment actually, we are going to use that Amazon S3, we are going to use the destination also. Destination also. So the destination, it's a separate folder and the source is a separate folder, but both are in the Amazon environment. But the transformation, we have to do it here. We are going to do it here. So what we are going to do now, we are going to get the file from the S3 storage one. And we are doing all the transformation using that our ADF. Then destination again we are going to do that one the uh, s3 storage 2 so that part that so in that way actually we can do it we can use it is it clear so any of the cloud actually we can connect it so okay fine so anything else do you want to know about this one through the idea from the theoretical so or what what is your doubt you can you can you can ask with me because now actually again now i'm going to show that one our azure portal platform and on, on small example i'm going to use it by creating that one small pipeline for copying the data from one enrollment to another enrollment we will see that hands on session before that one just you can you can clarify with me if you're having any doubts on this uh, azure pla platform sorry idea of you can ask with me if you're having any questions. Uh, one more question. These are all yeah. like pipeline, then activity. These are like to make the connection between the sources and the target, getting the data into our uh, DW tables. But after that, if I want to process something, like I don't miss any, what you call, uh, processing or cleansing the data. So for cleansing or transforming the data, what is what is the tool is used for this one? Is there See any here, uh, I think you, I, you mistaken actually something you mistaken. So here the linked services and the IR and data services is only going to be represent that your uh, connection and then source and destination files information. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the activity I told that one activity, right? So we are having that active lot of activities. Okay. We are having a lot of activities for the transformation purpose. Using the activity, we are going to do the all the transformations, okay. any type of transformation right, if you want to do it. Conditions and all, right? You said. Anything, anything. So if you want to apply the condition, I, I told you that only for, for the if condition or the looping concept or that copying the actions or that if you want to add that extra columns or that if you want to get the all the files from that one particular environment or that if you want to apply the filter. You got it. Okay. These all of that our transformation activities, right? So yes. for the each action, we are having the different activities. So that activities actually, so we are going to use it for that our transformation purpose. But these activities, so for example, just imagine I'm having that first activity. Here, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to get the all the files from that one folder. This is first action. Okay. So then what I'm going to do. After getting the files, I'm going to apply the filter, which is the file ending with the CSV, which is the file ending with the CSV. So that files only I'm going to filter it. 
just imagine so i am going to have the 10 files which is ending with the dot csv that all the 10 files one by one i want to uh, copy in the my destination in romance so for the purpose what i am going to use it one more activity i am going to use it which is going to do the repeated action so instead of this one actually what i am going to do that one i am going to use the copy things So this is one actually I'm going to use it for the copy. See here, what I'm doing now, so here, I'm getting all the files. Getting all the files. So getting the files. Then here, what I'm doing, I'm going to apply the filter. And here, that filter result I'm passing loop. One by one, it is going to take that one. Here, that one by one file, actually, it is going to be copied. So, from here to here, from here to here. So, the loop, it will give that into this one. See, this is called a pipeline. So, all are available inside of the pipeline. You got it? Is it understandable? Yes, clear. Perfect. Thank so you. So this is the, the each one is called transformation, right? Fine. So this is the way actually we are going to do. So the pipeline is nothing but it is your transformation flow. The pipeline is nothing but it is your transformation flow. Okay. Anything else? Any clarification in this flow? Otherwise, we can go with that our Azure portal. Yeah, I think it's good to go. Yeah, sure. See, just I'm taking, this is the portal, sorry, portal.azure.com is the portal URL for the Azure platform. I'm going to log in. So the each and every part, it will be in that uh, very, very, very clearly from the scratch in that regular session. Since it's a demo session, now, just I will show you that one uh, about the features. I will explain that our regular class very detailed. Now I'm directly, I'm going to create everything. So I'm going, to, I need the storage enrollment for storing the file first. So the purpose I'm going to create the storages. Actually, we are having, we are having that uh, blob storages, Azure data lake storages, Azure uh, uh, data SQL databases like this we are having different storages and this actually I'm going to create the resource group first because uh, all the resources you have to create under that one resource group only I will create this one and the blob storage and the region I'm selecting that I will, I will tell you very clearly why we have to and when we have to select that particular region. So like this, I will I will tell you very clearly in that uh, regular session. Now I am going to create with the default feature. Rest of the things I am going to keep it as it is. Then click the review create.
so uh, i'm creating that one storage to store my data files actually and meanwhile i'm i'm going to create that data factory also the data factory i'm going to create it azure data factory i'm going to create it the azure data factory this is the data factory and create a data factory So the resource group already I have created the name of dev rg under this resource group I am going to create that name e pdf so it's already available in the global name so iit iconic circuit solutions okay fine then the git configuration I don't want to get into the git configuration now. Click the review and create. Then click create. Yeah, the ADF is created. Here that our storage also created. Go to the storage. First, I'm going to create the container. The container is actually usually we will use it for storing that our files. Uh, it's nothing but it's like a folder. So I'm going to create the container. So one container I'm going to create in the name of input container. The real time scenario actually we will create that one based on that our business project related names actually we will provide here provide actually here actually i'm using just as a input container only and click create the container output container i'm going to create it the output container i'm going to create it it's fine so in the input container click this one so manually i'm going to upload the file from that our local to that our input container folder simply i'm going to take these two files actually these two files i'm going to take it So again, I'm clicking. So some JSON file also I'm, I'm, I'm moving. Just I'm uploading into that my input container. Total I'm having four files, that's fine. Go to this. So in the blob storage is Siva container uh, storage, actually it's a blob storage. The blob storage is we are having the two container one container is the input container and another container is the output container the input container we are having four files the output container we are having blank so nothing so now that our scenario is we have to copy the data from this input container to output container so using that our azure data factory go to the door, azure data factory you have to open the studio this is a work and roman azure data factory So this is the tower, Azure Data Factory environment. Some pop-up is opening, let's see what it is. Here, the manage action, the left side, we are having the four icons, the home, the author, and the monitor. Then finally, we are having that our manage. The manage environment, actually, I'm going to create the link services. The link services, we are going to use it as a connection string purpose. Connection string. We are going to use it as a connection string. 
So here, this is the environment. Here, so what I'm going to use it, I'm going to uh, find that my storage environment. Actually, what is the storage we have created? Now we have created the blob storages. So the link services we have to create for the blob storages only. So then I'm creating the blob storage. Yes, it's created. In the blob storages, I'm creating the link services. Uh, LS is representing that link services, the naming convention, we have to follow it like this one. The ABS is representing that your storage type. The ABS is the Azure blob storages. Then uh, one one thing actually I informed, uh, told you that the integration runtime, the integration runtime is that auto resolved integration time. This is called Azure IR, the default one. The default one. The Azure IR is a default one. The rest of the things you can leave it as it is. The account key authentication only you are going to use it as of now. Then subscription you have to choose it. I am having that pay as you go. Then storage is this is a blob storage you are. You can check it whether this connection are working or fine. This is the connection string only, right? The connection is working or fine. You can check it. Yeah, it's working. Connection successfully. Then click create. So now I'm going to create the data set. The data set actually going to be represent that your file data or file table, or the data file or data table or that kind of folder where you're keeping the data. So for the purpose, we have to create the data set. The data set just I'm creating. The data set also I'm going to create for the blob storage environment only because the blob storage only I'm, I'm having my all files data. Just to click this one and click continue. Then file format, as the default actually we can select it even though if you're having the JSON file along with the CSV, not a problem. You can choose that your file format type as a CSV. Then it's okay. Then here, the data set we are going to use it in that environment Azure Blob Storages for the work purpose, for the identifying that input container, for the identifying the input container. So using the connection, which connection? Link services, then LS ABS is the connection. So this is a connection. This is going to be help to give the path details, the connection string details. In that connection, I am creating this one, one data set to finding out what? To finding out that my container, that in the input container. Yeah, I'm not going to finding any particular file. I'm, I'm going to I am going to find link that only that my container, that folder. Container is nothing but, don't confuse, container is nothing but, so folder only. The terminology here, we are using the container. And the, inside of the container, we are going to have that all the files, and the multiple files we are having, uh, we are having. that's fine. But the, each file going to be have the first row as a header, yes? Yeah, then click it, okay. Then import schema, the import schema, the same structure, we want to get it. We will see it more detailly in the schema types in that our upcoming sessions. Then click okay. Fine. Now I have created that one data set which is going to be identified that our input container. The same way I need that one more in, uh, one more uh, data set for finding that our output container. So that blob is also for the blob enrollment only. Then same delimited text. Okay, fine. So here the data set I'm going to create it for the blob storage enrollment. For which container? For the output container. And the link services using the which connection you are going to connect? Yeah, link services the LS underscore ABS. And this is going to be identified that my output container. Yeah, that's all. Click OK. Same, the ending also. So when we are copying the data, so first for uh, the file data, it is going to be first row as a header format only, so that I'm checking this one and click OK. So now we are having the two data sets. Two data sets we have created. Fine. Then what we have to do? So here, I am going to create the new pipeline. So go to this pipelines here, new pipeline, click it. And this is the place where you are going to define that or all the transformations using that or activities. The activities where we are having, the left side we are having the activities. So uh, a lot of things are available and a lot of features are available. Even you can um, uh, get that machine learning logic also you can define it here. Power query features also you can define it here. So, but we are we are going to use it that our common all the transformation features. So the move, move and transform features we will see it, and then the data bricks features we will see it. And the general features, all the all the data activities we will. So the common things, data lakes also we will use it. So the transformation perspective, what are the things we have to use it almost everything, not only the particular environment, the common thing, everything we will use it. So here simply I'm going to use it and copy activity. So this is my pipeline. 
this is my pipeline the pipeline i am going to give the name the pipeline i what i am going to i am going to do the data movement the data what data movement you are going to do it i am going to copy the data from where to where from the input to output container just giving that or meaningful name giving that on meaningful meaningful name for the pipeline yeah it's giving or oh, instead of the pipeline we are having that one copy activity the copy activity for what copying data from input to output this is the activity name this is the activity name and this is the pipeline name so the pipeline so it should be represented as a pipeline that is the reason i'm starting the name underscore uh, pl underscore the pl representing pipeline the data set we have created ds ds is underscore data set link services we have created ls yes the naming convention we have to follow it everywhere so now we have created the copy the copy for what for copying the data from the source to environment what is the source here you have the feature source i told you that the adf is not it's not a code free technology you are not going to write any code but everything you are going to do it using that your graphical user interface yeah i'm doing here the source environment i'm going to pass it already i have created the data set i have created the data set i'm using two one is the input and another one is the output then here the source we have to use it the input container this is our input what you are going to do i am going to copy all the files i am going to copy all the files then we have to choose the file code, wild card path and then sync sync here representing sync means the destination target sync means destination or target the target and what is the data set this is our output content is the data set that's all that and i am i am not going to do anything particularly i am not going to mention anything just csc the destination environment we have selected as a csc only so that's the reason actually i'm selecting the csc that's fine then i want to run it for the running purpose you have to save the file if you want to save the file now you have to click the publish all but now i'm not going to save it without saving do you want to so can i can i can i run the file uh, run the pipeline yes i can do it how by the clicking the debugging debugging is for running that your pipeline without saving so during the development time if you want to do that one so i am i am using the 10 activities for the transformation purpose the 10 activities i am using so lot of activities we are having using on each one the respective purpose the particular purpose and i am defining all the logic but i want to execute it only the five activities i want to test it so partial pipeline execution you can use the debug or without saving that your whole pipeline execution you can use the debug the debug for doing that your debugging partially or full now i'm going to use it debug fully it's copying the data queued actually the pipeline is queued so in this output tab actually you can see that one each activity status the each activity status what it is giving what it is status so the so it's you now queued so now it's completed here what is the input so the input details actually you can see it so what what are the informations you have passed so everything actually the important thing so from our side we have mentioned only that wildcard file path information star only the rest of the things are the default only as it is it is taken okay fine what is the output output actually data read so data written so how many data read and how many data written so how many files read how many files written so speak connection so internally so what what uh, so how many systems supported all this information these are all the internal things so status is completed status is completed succeeded now go to this your blob storages the output container should have the files the output container should have the files see i did not mention which type of file should be copied from that source to destination because i have mentioned that star the star means all files the all files actually i got it see here i can open this one but here edit see this one it is in that our json file format i am now i mean that instead of the output container only so i am seeing the data instead of the output container only edit as it is the format see csv files format the source file the source file format as it is it's moved into that copy not mode copy mode means it should not be available in that our input but in the input also it will be available because we did it copy only you know we did not move 
copied. Now the files are copied. So this is the way actually we are going to do that our uh, pipeline creation. This is the way we are going to do it, all the things. You got it? So like this, actually, we are going to see every every transformation. So a lot of a lot of activities we are having. So uh, in the towers uh, regular session, actually. So what are the things we are going to learn it now? So Azure Data Factory. The Azure Data Factory in the storage space. What are the things we are going to use it now? A blob storages. This is one of the storage. Azure Data Lake storage. Azure Data Lake Storages, Azure SQL Database, and Cosmo DB also, we will see that one. And uh, AWS 2 Azure, AWS S3 to Azure, S3 to Azure. So like this, we are going to see a lot of things actually. So just a high level only I'm, I'm, I'm showing here and here. So this is our course content we are going to learn it so from the big data introduction because that uh, we are going to deal with the data only so what is the meaning of the big data how the data are big data are generated actually we are not going to learn it big data technology we are going to see it about that our big data how the data are forming so huge amount of data how it is forming so to handle the type of big data only so big data technology technologies are coming even here also we are going to handle it but for handling what we are going to use it now so for transformation so so some level we are going to use it that our azure data factory and some level we are going to use it our azure data factory the data factory also we are going to learn it actually i missed it sorry data bricks data bricks also we are going to learn it azure data Fix bricks this is also important and what we are going to for the data bricks learning we should have some basic knowledge of the python so the python also we are going to learn it so we should have that because in the data bricks actually we are going to use that small PySpark languages PySpark languages so that PySpark also we are going to learn PySpark along with the data bricks we are, so to understand the PySpark we need the python so we will learn the python the PySpark where we are going to use it inside of the data bricks we are going to use it those these things we are going to use it here so the copying information so using the azure data factory so how we can use it and azure key vault this is one of the very very important topic we are going to see for the credential management purpose we are going to use it the live enrollment you cannot use that your credentials in our by open actually so you have to use it azure key vault this is also important and tumbling features the event based trigger triggering concept also very very important one too scheduling features so three types of scheduling features are available so what is the three types and why when we have to use those things so that is the thing actually we are going to use it the copying the data from that our sql to blob copying the data from that our sql to blob so this is one of the important part because that our all, all almost our data uh, environment the data environment actually it will be in that our uh, uh, sql based environment or that for folder type folder type now blob storage is under uh, file type now we are um, we are using that uh, blob and uh, azure data lake so this type of information we are going to use it and how the migrate AWS packets to ADLS gen using. This is an important thing. And looping through REST API concept, how you can use it in this one. So the polybase concept, the polybase concept now, so the analysis and the system uh, analytics concept. The analytics environment, Azure analytics environment, how we can copy the data from the tower, one enrollment to the tower, on premise enrollment to the tower, Azure analytics. So it is also, we will see that one. So a lot of important things actually we will see that one. The duration actually it will be in the end we will see that one how to do that uh, migration from that one environment to another environment using that CACD. So here actually so we are going to see this one all the Python features. So Spark, Python, everything is so here we are going to use it. Actually. So the total uh, sessions actually it will come around that 60 hours. So it might be maximum around 70 hours it will come. 70 hours so so once it's completed now so you will get the knowledge of the uh, intermediate level in that Azure data factory the intermediate level almost on the two years of experience you will get it surely i can assure it 
but based on that your hands on preparations only how you are going to spend the time for the practices because the the functionalities the tools environment it's a new to you but that process you know already the atl process you know already but the environment how to use it in this environment how to do that process so that is very important for that one you have to spend the time practice more time you have to spend it so based on that one only you are going to get the knowledge but content wise it will be very clear and advanced to cloud content okay so that's all from my side for the today's demo so anything else you can ask with me Hey guys, are you there? Yeah. I mean, nothing from. Yes. Percent. Was it understandable or at first? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, we got the point. Just one okay. question: This integration with the reporting layer uh, is it something? I mean, which we will cover in this or? Sorry. Integration with the reporting layer, like. Is there some topic on that, like how integration with reporting level? I I didn't get to that exact point. So integration with that or reporting means uh, you are asking about that connecting with that one of the reporting tools. Ha, huh, correct. So reporting tools actually it is not a, a reporting is a separate point actually. Then that part if you want to know that one, we can show that one how to kind of for example the how how to connect to that Azure a data source with our Power BI. Okay. Okay. That what I can show. It's not a big deal. We can show it. Not a yeah. problem. Okay. Okay. Sorry. And uh, just just one more point. This about the cloud, right? Cloud environment. If you can just give one session on that, like just an yeah. overview also. Before between. Yeah. Before be, before we are getting into that our Azure Data Factories concepts. Actually, first I will I will give that or detailed explanation. What is the cloud and why we have to go with the cloud and what are the main yeah. advantages of using the cloud. Yeah. All those things I will give it. Not a problem. I will give it. Okay. The tomorrow okay, morning session. It is going to be that session only. So clearly, you will get idea. So why and when we have to go with that or Azure platform. So you should get clear idea about that one. Not a problem. I will give it. Okay, sir. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Any other queries? Uh, Kiran, actually, I'm seeing you now. Actually, so uh, what about your profile? So, uh, are you from that uh, uh, data related background or non-IT background? What is that one? Uh, Kiran, I'm able. I think has some problem. Okay, what about others? Any other queries? If no, no, then we can close the session. We are good. Uh, yeah, okay. Sorry. Yeah, we are good. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, so Shivan. We will meet in the our regular session. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you. We will meet Thanks. in the regular session tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. Bye.